Captain. In this video, we'll explore different chapters, diving into Simhaptic and its features. You can jump to any chapter by tapping the relevant section on the video timeline. To begin, let's understand what Simhaptic is. It's software that connects to your simulator, reads its data, and transforms it into gentle low-frequency sounds. These sounds are then sent to bass shakers, or as some may call it, haptic transducers, producing lifelike vibrations that elevate the simulator experience. In terms of operating systems, Simhaptic works only on Windows. In terms of simulators, Simhaptic works with Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane 11 and 12, DCS to be added soon. In terms of bass shakers slash gaming pads, Simhaptic works with all the different types. However, in order to maximize the capabilities and experience of Simhaptic, we recommend using a standard haptic transducer and not a gaming pad. To use Simhaptic, you will need at least one bass shaker, a dedicated sound card or USB audio adapter, which will be used for your bass shaker. Please note, Connecting Simhaptic to PC via Y splitter simply won't work as expected. As you can see, in the presented diagram below, you will need to connect your bass shaker to a dedicated sound card or a USB audio adapter. If you are having difficulties with this subject, we are always available to assist via our live chat on www.rkapps.shop. In order to download the latest version of Simhaptic, Either download it directly from the store from which you bought it or from www.rkapps.shop by going to the update section, clicking on some haptic, and then clicking on the download button of the latest version. To install some haptic, double click the simhaptic.exe downloaded file and allow admin permissions as needed. Press next. Agree or not to the end user agreement. Enter the path where Simhaptic will be installed. We highly recommend to install it not on the same drive as where your Windows operating system is installed in order to avoid issues with the auto start feature and press next. If you are using X-Plane, then you'll need to install the Simhaptic X-Plane plugin. We are working on having this process done automatically. Until then, please follow the steps below. Go to the Simhaptic folder. You'll find there a folder named Plugins. Double click it. You'll then find a folder named Simhaptic X Plane Plugin. Copy the Simhaptic X Plane Plugin folder. Navigate to your X Plane installation directory and open the Resources folder. Inside the Resources folder, find the Plugins folder. Paste the copied Simhaptic X Plane Plugin folder into the Plugins folder. Confirm a successful installation by checking for the presence of an item called Simhaptic. Upon each new release, you'll receive an email containing release notes and a download button. Updating is as easy as redoing the installation steps. We're actively developing an online updater to simplify this process. At RK Apps, we're very confident in the quality of our products. That's why we provide you the opportunity to experience Simhaptic for a seven-day free trial. This lets you explore Simhaptic and its magic firsthand before deciding whether to make a purchase. Upon entering Simhaptic for the first time, you'll encounter two choices. One is to activate the product using an email and serial key. The other is to initiate a seven-day free trial using just your email. If you purchase Simhaptic, click Enter Product Key, input your email address, input your serial number, and click Activate. For a 7-day free trial, click Start 7 Days Trial, enter your email, and click Start Trial. Simhaptic UI is divided into four tabs. Let's briefly explore their main objectives. In the upcoming section, we'll dive into each tab in detail. Main tab. Active Simulator Selection, Aircraft Profile Management, and Effects Options. Cloud tab, Share slash Import Aircraft Profiles Shared by Others. Settings tab, Control Audio, General Options, and X-Plane Server Port Settings. About tab, App Info, Essential Links, and Trial Activation. The Settings tab is your initial stop 
focusing on configuring audio. It also includes general and X-Plane server settings. Now, let's review the audio setup. Multiple outputs if you've connected multiple bass shakers to different sound cards or USB audio adapters. Enable this option. It lets you set distinct outputs for each effect, optimizing balance. But if you have a single bass shaker or multiple bass shakers on one single sound card, keep this option off. Output device. Here you have a drop down list with all available output devices. Select the output device used by your bass shaker. This output device is the device SimHaptic will inject the low frequency sounds into. Once selected, press the test button to verify vibrations are felt. Please note, if you don't feel any vibrations, double check your bass shaker amp volume as well as the output device volume via Windows sound settings. In case you still don't feel any vibrations, please contact us via our live chat on www.rkapps.shop and we will assist you to do the initial setup. Arrangement. SimHaptic comes with three variations of sound effects. Mono, which should be used in case you have a single bass shaker. Stereo, which should be used in case you have two bass shakers connected to the same sound card. 5.1 which should be used in case you have more than two bass shakers connected to the same sound card. Note, in case you are using a single bass shaker and experience low volume, use the stereo option for increased gain. Master volume. Use this slider to adjust the overall sound output of SimHaptic. Next is the general settings section. There you will find the following options. Auto minimize. Turning this on will minimize SimHaptic once launched. We recommend turning it on after the first few uses when you completed adjusting all the effects to your liking. Auto Start. Turning this on will make SimHaptic launch automatically once your simulator is launched. In case this is not working well for you, please check our manual for more troubleshooting. Sliders Value. Turning this on will show numeric values on the effects volume sliders. Announce Connection. Turning this on will induce a low-frequency welcome sound once a successful connection has been established between SimHaptic and your simulator. Auto Exit. Turning this on will cause SimHaptic to automatically exit once it detects that your simulator is no longer running. Full List. Turning this on will extend the window size when on the main tab with the purpose to have all the effects visible for ease of use the server settings section will be visible only when the X-Plane simulator is selected on the main tab. This to allow you to change the use port by the SimHaptic server in case the default port is already taken or blocked. To change the port, you will need first to change it inside SimHaptic, press save, and then go to the X-Plane plugins menu, select SimHaptic, and lastly, select the rest start server option. Now, let's talk about the main tab where all the magic happens. Let's go over its structure and deep dive into each of the sections. On the top left corner, you will find the waveform graph, which will visualize any sound output coming from SimHaptic. While it not offering a mandatory function in SimHaptic, it can help one conclude whether SimHaptic is producing sound or not, as well as its amplitude. Just for clarity, a steady line means no sound, while a sign-shaped line means sound coming out of SimHaptic. Next to the waveform graph, you'll find a simulator type drop-down list. The selected simulator should be the simulator you are currently running. Next to the drop-down list, you will find a connection indication. When SimHaptic is not connected to the simulator, it will have a red dot. When SimHaptic is connected to the simulator, it will have a green dot. Please note, that with MSFS, the green dot is expected prior to reaching the main menu only, and not before. Under the simulator type drop-down list, you will find the aircraft profile management tools. SimHaptic comes with six different default profiles for different types of aircraft. Piston engine aircraft. Turboprop engine aircraft. Jet engine aircraft. Gliders, motorized and non-motorized. Fighter jets. and Helicopters. Once you load an aircraft in the simulator, SimHaptic will detect its type and create the aircraft profile automatically accordingly. From that point, 
any change you will do to the profile will be auto-saved for that specific aircraft. Inside the text box is the current loaded aircraft profile name. Next to it, you'll find three buttons. The left button is the copy profile feature which allows you to copy all the settings from another aircraft profile that was already created or adjusted. Next to it is the Reset Profile feature, which will reset the aircraft profile to its defaults. Lastly, next to it, you'll find the Profiles Cloud feature, which will take you to the Cloud tab. We will discuss the Profiles Cloud feature in the next phase of this video. Under the top section, you'll find the list of available effects in SimHaptic. Currently, as of August 2023, SimHaptic has 30 effects, and we are continuously introducing new ones and improving existing ones. To better understand the available options per effect, let's focus on the afterburner effect for now. As you can see, on the left end, we have a checkbox, which you can check and uncheck, depending on if you want this effect to work for the aircraft or not. Also, while hovering with your mouse cursor above the checkbox, you'll be able to see a tooltip with a short explanation of the effect. Next to the right is the Effect Advanced Options Plus button, which as you can see, not all the effects have one. Pressing on the Plus button will open a subsection of Advanced Options for that specific effect. In the Afterburner effect, the Advanced Options are Fade In and Fade Out Times, which allows you to control how much time it will take for the Afterburner effect to kick in once activated, and how much time it will take it to fade out once deactivated. Each effect has different advanced settings designed specifically for it to allow you full customization to your needs and liking. Next to the right, you'll find the volume slider, which you can adjust to your liking while testing slash using the effect. The grab of the slider will color in green anytime the effect is playing. This is to help you easily conclude which effects are currently producing vibrations and which are not. Next to the right, you'll find a drop-down list of the available effect sound types, which allows you to choose the proper effect sound specifically for the aircraft you fly, and by that, reach a more realistic haptic experience per aircraft. Lastly, on the right end, you'll find a test button, which allows you to test each effect separately and adjust it to your liking. Keep in mind that in order to test the effects, a simulator should be running and connected to some haptic. If you have chosen to use the multiple outputs feature from the settings tab, instead of a volume slider per each effect, a button labeled audio setup will appear, which once you click on it, a subsection of audio setup will be open for that specific effect. This allows you to select the output devices you wish that this effect will produce sounds to, as well as the ability to control each output device volume separately. That's all about the main tab. Clicking the Cloud tab leads us to the Profiles Cloud. Here, you can share your own aircraft profiles and import others to share your adjusted profile. Click Share Profile at the top left. Fill in your name and a quick description of your Bash Shaker setup. This helps other users decide if it matches their setup or not for easy adoption. Then, click Share, and our profile will become accessible to all Simhaptic users right away. To edit your shared profile, Simply reshare the profile. To import a shared profile, click Import. When the button reads Activated, Import is complete. You can rate others' profiles, search by author name, and sort options. Remember, to use the Profiles Cloud, a running simulator should be connected to some haptic, as well as aircraft needs to be loaded. Now, on to the About tab, where you'll discover useful details. It shows the current SimHaptic version, your license type, trial or activated, a button to access the manual, the RCAPS website, the SimHaptic forum, the RCAPS Facebook page, our product pages, and finally, a button for RCAPS website with live chat support. The bottom section of the About tab will be empty if you are already activated. However, if you are on trial, it will include two buttons. Buy now, which will take you to the SimHaptic store page easily. Activate, which will allow you to enter your serial key after you've purchased SimHaptic. We're thrilled to share some remarkable feedback and reviews we've gathered about SimHaptic. These insights directly from our community shed light on the genuine experiences and impressions of those who have experienced the world of SimHaptic. 
So if you haven't even tried some haptic yet, what are you waiting for? Try it free for seven days and judge it yourself.